Got my own room again this time. Internal courtyard, so no bird. There's a bird feeder on the window there, but it, it doesn't seem to be attracting anything. But uh, yeah, it's been fine. And a bit of a different uh, experience this time. Um, but I will tell you about that in a little bit because I don't want to get into the middle of it if people um, walk in. However, I've just been brought back. I see two beds Mandy. So this is my brachytherapy bed. I've just had the last one done. I've just had the usual conversations that you seem to have with all the lovely nurses here that uh, I hope I never see you ever again, which <laughs> gets a laugh every time. It's fine. Um, I have had lots of gas in it and I have had a reasonable amount of Oromorph. So, yeah, it's good. Can't feel nothing right now. Um, I was going to get some water down my neck. Um, one of the lovely nurses is going to come and take my cannula out. Um, and then once I've had a wee and get my discharge papers, then uh, I can get going. So they reckon it's going to be a quick turnaround because they're already on the discharge papers, getting them sorted. Um, I have until 6pm to get to the radiotherapy ward, which is where the bell is. Um, and it's half three. So I've asked George, who does the uh, discharge stuff, that if she thinks it's going to take a while for something, because I've got to take some meds with me as well, they're giving me some hefty painkillers. Um, if it's going to take a while, that I'm going to walk up to radiotherapy and ding the bell and then I'll come back down again. So, uh, so yes, yeah, so we'll see how, how that goes. But hopefully it should be out reasonably soon. And um, I've been given just a little bit, because obviously mess missed breakfast and I've been lying down so it's been difficult to eat um so John and I have decided we're going to try Papa's fish and chips in Willoughby on the way back um nice quick easy it's got really good reviews everyone here raves about about it um I know all the people that want to say oh we're thinking carbs equal sugar and sugar feeds cancer and all of this stuff I know I do know but uh yeah so we're going to do that. And then once I get back to my van, I'll tell you about all my, about my day, checking in here and how much better it could have gone. Hello and welcome to my bed. I'm sorry I'm not um, up and about at the minute. I'm having a bit of a day of it. Um, it is, oh, do, what day is it? Thursday today. So um, it was, I managed to do, last week I managed to get out on the Friday and it was like the Saturday night by the time it hit me. So it seems that this is about by, about right for the pain. John, bless him, has been to the doctors and got me all sorts of, this is what it's like in here. This is why we have our own vans, people. I'm going to have enough medicine for every ailment soon, I think. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the bubbling of everything around there, I think everything's so sore because of what went on with the, uh, brachytherapy that anything else that's around there, even hunger pains really, really hurt. Um, and they keep telling me that you don't get as much wind if you eat. So I'm trying to like eat little bits and not have that, but the, the, oh, the pain of air bubbles moving around or, um, I've been given oxycodone instead of um, the Oromorph because the Oromorph comes in a massive bottle and I'm not going to need it for long enough for that. And because it's a controlled drug, I'd have to take it to the chemist to get them to dispose of it and it seems rather wasteful. So they've given me oxycodone, um, like seven days of it because I know I won't need it for that long. Um, but I've got that for the pain relief. But because I know it's mega, I ain't taking that unless I absolutely need it. So I'm working on cocodamol and paracetamol but I had to take some of that last night because my goodness I couldn't even have a wee um it was um it was that painful so I was just like stop doing it to yourself man you know you've had a lot of I mean the nurse when when we were um discharged on the Tuesday she was just saying don't forget this is a very invasive procedure that you've had over a few days um don't think you're going to be up and about walking and everything's going to be fine so take it easy give yourself a break and I've already realized by just unpacking my bag yesterday that I need to listen because um yeah 
I am struggling a little. I get through it, you know, I've just got to be a good girl and listen to people for a change. So, um, so yeah, um, it turned around a little bit when, um, and I said, I'll tell you about how my intake was. Um, it must have been, it must have been a blip. I did end up telling the nurse who came down with me for brachytherapy on the Tuesday because there's a lot of time to chat with that because you kind of go down and then you wait for the um, team to take you down to theatre. And then once you're awake, you wait for the team to take you from recovery into um, CT and then MRI and then wait for a porter to come and take you back again. So that nurse is with me literally from seven o'clock in the morning until about three o'clock in the afternoon on and off. So um, I did tell her that there was a little bit of a blip because she was just like, how have things been so far? And to be honest with you, that ward is amazing. Um, sometimes you have to wait a bit for your meds, but you know, if you buzz again, you get them. It's a, it's a done thing. But uh, we got there, told to get there two o'clock on Tuesday. So we did. And it was, oh, six o'clock, I think, before I really saw anybody. Um, I had a guy pop his head in and say, we've not forgot about, probably about half five, we've not forgotten about you, come and take your bloods in half an hour. Uh, and I saw him two hours later. Um, it was just before six that they did the intake, uh, which is checking swabs for MRSA and uh, COVID and things. So you don't want to be walking around until you've had them. I mean, I don't, I don't feel like I've, I didn't feel like I had anything. Um, and then we were talking about whether I should buzz and get somebody in. And I'm like, but I don't, I don't need anything. You know, I'd taken juice and a bottle of pop and um, had snacks and things and I had everything I needed. You know, I was just literally chilling and me and John were walking around and then John went back to his van for a little bit. Um, so what do I buzz for? You know, I'm interrupting somebody from going, helping people just to go, don't forget I'm here. Um, it was six o'clock, so it was like four hours without seeing anybody in a room by myself. I tried to prop the door open, but it kept closing. Um, and there was somebody in a room right opposite me. Um, the one thing I do love is it seems like there's some patients there that are really poorly. Um, I don't know. Um, it seems like they didn't really have long left, maybe. They, was, they were never left alone. If the family wasn't there, there was a nurse sat in with them and that was going on right across the way. So I thought, I don't need people to see me walking around the room or, or whatever for do, doing that. But it was very unusual, anyway, very unusual that I'd been left in there for that long. Um, but I kept being forgotten. So it was 11 o'clock at night before they came in with my enema. It was uh, 8 o'clock at night before they came in and took my bloods but didn't give me a cannula, which I was told by the lady that gave me the enema that they should have given me a cannula. Um, the enema worked from about 10 past 11 until just before midnight. So by the time I'd got off the, the toilet, they, they'd been saying I had really bad belly cramps and they were saying the enema will sort it, don't you worry. So I'm like, brilliant, okay. Um, the enema helped but did not sort it and by the time I got off the toilet I, it was nil by mouth because I couldn't eat after midnight so I call them in they say well we'll have to see what we can do we might not be able to do anything and I'm like well that's me awake for the night then because I can't get to sleep Um, so see I do this now just like lying in bed trying to work out the air bubbles and get everything sorted and um, and then they said I could have an uh, injection of morphine and I'm like that seems really serious. That seems overkill. Do I need it? So she goes, if you've got the pain, and I'm like, well, and, and I was getting pains like proper shooting when I was in there. So I'm like, she goes, right, you're going to need your rest. So let's get you some morphine, um, but an injection. So there might be some side effects like uh, sickness or whatever. So, um, or nausea. So I'm like, okay, okay, well, let's go for that. So she comes in, gives me the morphine injection, which does help with the pain. And then I wake up at half past two with raging reflux, like raging enough that got me into the A&E last time. I mean, I could tell it was reflux because it kind of just gets you here um, and in your throat a little bit. And that's so why I'm sat there with my fist stuffed under my boob, rocking backwards and forwards, giving my buzz. I'm like, I've got this reflux. Um, I've t I took my tablet before I went to bed. Um but this is terrible and I know I can't take anything. 
So she goes, well, we'll have to get the doctor again and see if there's anything. Are you sure you need something? And I'm lying in bed and I'm like, oh, I don't normally, I don't normally take tablets and things if I, if I need to. I don't, I'm normally a very well person. Um, you know, I complain about aches and pains and stuff, but that's nothing. I won't ram loads of meds down my throat and what have you, and especially won't disturb people in the hospital if I don't need to. So um, she goes away and comes back and she said, right, okay, we'll have to get you a cannula and to get you the cannula so we can get you some IV fluids and IV paracetamol and some IV things for your reflux. So I'm like, perfect, thank you very much because the cannula will help for the next day, blah, blah, blah. So half four in the morning, then I'm still, I'm still awake. A guy comes in, puts a cannula in, takes four attempts to get the cannula in, but then gets me on paracetamol and stuff that runs through for an hour. So that beeps at half five, wakes me up. Um, not that I don't think I really, I think I just nodded off because I had to lie flat because it was in the crook of my arm and they don't like doing cannulas there because of the bend. But we did that. Um, and then, of course, someone comes in at, uh, I don't know, six o'clock, saying, there's your gown, here's everything else, you know, get ready. Um, someone will come and get you at seven to go down. So I'm like, right, okay then. So um, I get them to unhook the thing so I can actually get dressed, go brush my teeth very carefully without having to spit anything out and then uh, get ready for going down at seven o'clock. Um, so I'd not had a drink since midnight, which was about right, obviously, for, for the nil by mouth, but... Um, yeah, I think one of the worst things I've found is to have something that bothers you after you can't take any tablets. I've never had that before. Um, and that was awful. We could see they were jumping around, still taking the time. I mean, it was like two hours for them to say they were going to get me some help with the reflux and actually getting it. Um, so yeah, I know it takes time and everything, but that was the biggest shit show of an intake that I have ever had. Um, and I know it's unusual for that hospital and that ward, so there must have been something. Uh, they said that maybe when I came in, they hadn't just literally hadn't pressed the button to say that the intake had been done because it hadn't been done, um, and that I was actually an inpatient there and on lots of other things. Um, but back to the next morning, going and getting the brachytherapy, so obviously I go down um, at 7 going to theatre, get everything put in, and then I've got to lie flat again until I go back again after scans and stuff. And everybody listened to me. I was just like, I could do with a bit more morphine after I wake up because um, the lying flat on the MRI for a long time, once you've got those rods in, is actually really, really uncomfortable. So I'm just like, can I just please have a bit of Oromorph before I go through? Because last time I was, I only just made it through without getting anything else on the other side and getting onto the comfier bed again because it's an absolutely hard flat board. So they gave it me and it was so much better. And then when they were taking the rods out the first time, because they were in for two days, they had to use some lubricating gel just to make sure the packing was okay and it wasn't too dry to come out. Um, that was okay this time, but then I asked them if they could use something for taking the rods out because it's actually quite a big thing at the end where it goes against your cervix and it's not the most uncom it's not the most comfortable thing to have taken out. So they popped a bit more of that lubrication in there and that was amazing. So they really do listen. And then once I got back to the ward, they just plunked me on the same bed because you can't get off the bed. Point pointed me at the window. The door was behind me, but. I don't think I was left for more than an hour at any one time without someone coming and checking on me. So when they knew I couldn't move or anything, they were back to how they always were, like really, really good. So the previous day just must have been a blip. But um, So I gave them some feedback anyway. I just I told them exactly what had happened in a real matter of fact way. Nothing went wrong. There was nothing bad apart from the fact that... Um, I didn't know how bad things were going to get or nobody had really taking my pain seriously the night before to be able to help me with it before the nil by mouth kicked in so that was just it but they took the feedback they've, they've thanked me for, for it saying that we can't be having things like that so thank you for being so matter of fact with it all offered me to put in a formal complaint but I'm not going to do anything stupid like that because you know everything things happen and it's so unusual for them if it was a standard thing and it was always bad then maybe I think about it I don't know so that's it and it's done and I ding the bell as you saw and then we went for Papa's Fish and Chips on the way because we'd driven past that like 60 times probably um, over all this time and never been in 
So we stopped there. My appetite wasn't particularly brilliant, but it was lovely. So we're going to go back there again, no doubt, and um, and try something when I'm feeling a bit more up to it. Um, and there's nothing more I like more than a licensed chippy because a glass of wine with your fish and chips is brilliant. But I'd had so many drugs on that day. There was no way I was adding alcohol to the mix. So things for another time. So now I've just got to get over this bellyache that I've got at the minute. That it does affect me. It's affecting my balance still. I've got to keep going woozy. Um, I don't know if there's any mark on my face here. Um, I've got a sore knee. I've always got to dodge you something. I've got a sore knee and a client got out of bed last night. I thought, I'll get a banana. Potassium's great for sleep, yeah? I'll grab a banana, go to get back on the bed, put my knee down first, forget that it hurts. Go all wobbly, fall, bush my eye, this eye, which was the opposite eye than it would, would have been on there. And I don't even know how I did it. And I was so peed off. I text John and I'm like, you never guess what I've just done. And he goes, do you want me to come over? I'm like, no, mate, you don't. Stay over there. I am fuming, just literally. So I think there's lots of hormonal things in because I've been crying an awful lot. And uh, um, and being angry an awful lot. So I think I just need to, I think it's a come down maybe of the final thing. And that's it now. You know, I don't have to go back to the hospital until I get my scan appointment. So it's like I've had this something to do for all of this time and now I don't. And it just feels like a little bit of a a weird come down. I mean, I'm happy to not be going back to that hospital all the time, you know. But it was weird because obviously every time a nurse went out of the room, they were like, right, I don't want to see you again, you know, in the nicest possible way. I hope I never see you again. And that was it times about 50 because they're so lovely and all the nurses are there and then I had to go over to radiotherapy to ding the bell so yeah it was um it was a big day felt like a big day so it's just slowly coming down from that and slowly trying to get rid of this pain I think so I'm taking this time to stay in bed what time is it it's actually 11 o'clock in the morning and I'm still in bed but standing up is not good right now so I'm just gonna stay here a little bit I've been answering some work emails and things because I can't help myself. But um, I'm going to listen to the take it easy thing and I'm going to try my Windies or Deflatein. I'll try one first and see which one goes better and um, work on that and see which ones can stop these bubbling things. John's double checked with the pharmacist that I picked up my meds for to see which one's going to be a good thing and make sure it doesn't go against anything I'm already taking. Um, yeah, and that'll be that. So I know it's only a small update to things, but uh, hopefully that's enough for now. Um, and I'm looking forward to the weekend. I just hope that I'm going to be okay enough to see people. Um, so that's why it's like I take care of myself now to make sure that I am actually okay. I don't know if I'm going to be up for much walking around, but we're going to move the vans onto the field rather than be by the West Wing, by the Airbnb, and then pop a, a picnic bench between the two vans so then I can sit out and if people do want to come and say hi, then I don't have to worry about seating or anything like that and I've got somewhere to come back to to sit down and chill out if I need to without having to pop myself in the van all the time. So... Hopefully that'll be lovely just to get a bit of the buzz of the event as well as get to see my friends and, and people there too. So I'm going to get myself another brew, try and stop all this wind bubbling and um, yeah, I think I'll just get myself moving a little bit in, in the hope that I'll feel a bit better. So thank you so much for watching again. Hopefully content after this will get a little bit more interesting rather than me just sitting in a van and chatting. Um... Obviously, I'll keep you updated with how it's going. I've had so many messages from people that are about to go through the exact same thing. The lady at work that's going through the exact same thing. So it's been lovely to be able to share my experience anyway. Um, there's lots of frightening stuff out there on the internet, I think. Um, and I know mine's not the same as everybody. Everybody might. Some people will definitely be having the frightening version. But it's not always like that. And uh, I think it's just good to share your own view to say... You know, sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't. So, yeah. Well, you guys take care and hopefully I look forward to seeing the people I'm going to see over the weekend. Um, and uh, otherwise, I will catch you on my next video. Take care, guys. Bye.